Hey, so it's the time of the year again, where essentially our portfolio of companies have reported or are reporting um, their upcoming earnings in time to come. So of course, being a huge Alibaba bull, how can I forget um, reporting or going through um, the recent Alibaba's earnings itself? But I think before I actually dive into the earnings report, um, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, which is Momo Platforms. So for those of you who don't actually use Momo yet, I honestly don't know what you're waiting for. So I think this very nicely ties into today's topic itself, because I know many of you are actually quite busy with your day to day, and you might just want to see a few top line numbers. So I think in the innate app of Momo Platforms itself, let's say, for example, you look into Alibaba, let's just say that you want to look into the commentaries of what other investors are thinking about the recent earnings call. You can just scroll through and look through what are the different comments that people have on the platform itself. And more importantly, if you just want to judge a few of the quick financial numbers or just to essentially have a quick summary of what um, Alibaba just reported, you can see that um, in the innate app, they have a lot of all these additional details like um, revenue up 2%, net income up 138%. You can also judge from the different categories of Alibaba's business itself because as we all know, it's a huge conglomerate. Um, China commerce makes up around 69%. And I think to really make sense of the business data, you have to look at it on a year-on-year -year basis. So they have a few key metrics that you can actually keep track of, like GMV, monetization rate, profit of equity investments, etc. And most, most importantly, some of the key financial indicators that many of you follow, like EPS, free cash flow, quick ratio, gross margins. And I think for many like-minded Alibaba investors, most of us are majorly concerned about um, the margins that Alibaba is posing as a business. And you can see in terms of both gross margin and net margin, um, over the last few quarters, it has been on a steady uptrend. And which is why um, the market probably reacted quite positively to Alibaba's recent earnings during pre-market. And we can talk about why Alibaba essentially tanked again over the last few days in a separate video. But yes, um, that's generally how you navigate through um, the Momo app itself. And for those of you who are interested, um, there is a link below to sign up. And right now, they're running aggressive sign-up campaigns as well. Um, if you deposit at least 2,700 Singapore dollars, you can spin a wheel and win up to a free Apple share. Thank you, Momo, for sponsoring this video. Now, getting into my own analysis of Alibaba's recent earnings quarter, I think I would keep it pretty short and sweet because there really isn't much contentious point to begin with. Um, I'll just focus on a few of the key factors that I've been looking or tracking and also update my own particular Excel um, so that you can see on a year-on-year -year comparison how has Alibaba fared over the last probably six to eight quarters. And of course, don't forget to smash that cute little like button as well. So as always, I'll just give you a quick rundown on how I annotate or how I take notes. Quite intuitively, um, red just means not so good while green is on the better side. Yellow probably just means neutral. So I think just to get you focused into how uh, many Alibaba investors judge the earnings presentation itself. So there are two core business segments that we tend to focus on. Number one is the China commerce business, which still makes up at least 60-70% of the entire business portfolio itself. And number two is the cloud. And this is essentially the future of Alibaba's growth trajectory because we all know that um, cloud adoption is a huge thing. Um, you look at AWS, you look at Microsoft as well. But the sad thing is both China commerce and cloud actually do have a red color um, highlighted number. And we'll go into the individual business segments in the later part of this presentation. But just keep in mind that um, even though it has been a largely neutral quarter, I think many investors were also hopeful that there might be some sort of growth um, rejuvenation again. But evidently, we haven't seen that playing out in, in real time yet because um, let's not forget this earnings quarter itself was in the December of last year. So the reopening really started in the mid of December, which is why um, in order for you to see the full effects of um, the op reopening and business sentiments picking up again, we might need to wait for one or two more quarters. And um, if it subsequently in the subsequent one or two quarters, um, earnings growth rates and all the different sentiments from different businesses still haven't picked up, then maybe many of our underlying theses, um, such as China being a great reopening story, it might actually fall flat on itself and many of us might have to revisit our investment thesis again. But that's a key factor to keep in mind um, for the subsequent two quarters. So on the other business segments like um, international commerce and even Cainia, which is their delivery network, um, they're all essentially growing steadily. But let's not forget that they tend to be lower margin. And the highest margin business of Alibaba is actually the China commerce business and specifically CMR. Um, for those of you who don't know, CMR is customer management revenue. And this 
this specific part of the business, it's under a huge amount of pressure. And we'll talk about it more later in the individual segment part itself. And this is the high margin business. And for those of you who have been following Alibaba, you will know that in terms of their margins, um, whether is it net or gross, um, it has always been on a downtrend because of this impact. And this impact largely is due to the advertising um, ecosystem and climate back in China. And over the last two years, many advertisers and merchants alike have been pulling back in terms of their advertising budget, which is why it has a direct impact in terms of Alibaba's bottom line. Um, if your high margin business is not growing as fast, in fact, if it's shrinking, while your other low margins business like all these are increasing, um, it's not really painting a very good picture. But we do see um, signs of normalization here. So I, I would like to say that there's signs of normalization and we still have Q1 to Q3 of this year. Um, of 2023 to look out for to see whether um, there are signs of improvement or not on a general sentiments basis. Now, I think one more thing to take note is whenever you look at very broad based numbers, um, whether is it reported on CNBC or Reuters or wherever platform you use, you always look at, oh, what about top line revenue beat? What about bottom line income beat? And yes, Alibaba indeed has beat both numbers. But I think specifically for Alibaba's case, um, the income numbers are a little bit skewed. You can see that there's huge fluctuations both up and down um, because they tend to write down and write up their investment arm. So let's not pay too much focus in this idea of um, net income. I think one specific thing you should look at, uh, or at least two things you should look at is share-based compensation and the other thing is free cash flow, which we will explore in the later part of this presentation. At least one good thing um, for shareholders is there is a healthy trend of share-based compensation going on a downslope, especially when the company is not doing very well. So I'm not going to name names here, but we all know those few tech companies that haven't been posting great results, but have been printing shares like nobody's business. So that's just some um, general thoughts on that. So I think generally um, in terms of um, finances wise, um, cost cutting has been effective. You can see that based on how they have reported um, the different segments of their cost, essentially product development stayed flat and for sales and marketing, it actually went down by quite a large extent. And um, this is quite intuitive because so the economy isn't even doing very well. So there's really not much point trying to um, get or squeeze out the extra dollar because your dollar can go much further in a better economy. So um, probably just keep that money, keep the expenses and we will come back and revisit this again. So at least this quarter, um, Alibaba did not give out any donation expense to the CCP. No, I'm just joking. It was a one-time expense in the last quarter or last two quarters. So now focusing on the more important business metric that I talked about, which is free cash flow. So Alibaba has once again proved critics wrong and look at this amount of cash flow they managed to spit out. This is 11 billion US dollar. 11 billion US dollar in one quarter. Um, yes, I know that in Q4, which is usually the end of the year, um, it tends to be the best quarter of Alibaba. But let's not forget that in the previous quarter, they split out around 5 billion. So initially, our many of our assumptions is that 5 billion times 4 quarters, that's around 20 billion of free cash flow of um, how much Alibaba is spitting out. So if you were to just add back $11 billion, um, I think getting a 20B free cash flow is not too hard. And if Alibaba is really able to spit out 20B free cash flow easily, um, I think right now it's trading around a $200, $250 billion market cap. And if it continues trading at this valuation, I mean, it essentially just means that it's trading at around a 10% free cash flow yield. So what this means is within 10 years, assuming zero growth, zero growth in free cash flow, zero growth in whatever, um, you get back you get back all your capital, assuming that they return you your capital, if it's returned um, in free cash flow. So is 10% free cash flow you even high? Um, I'll leave it up to you to decide. But if you compare to your other US counterparts or whatever other companies there are, um, this looks ridiculous, ridiculous. And let's not forget one more thing. I think I just put a huge question mark here because I clearly don't even understand how the market is pricing Alibaba now. You look at the net cash position of Alibaba, it's at 55 billion US dollars, by the way, this is not RMB, 55 billion US dollars. So if you take it away from the current, I don't know, 200, 220 B market cap, it's trading closer to, I don't know, 150 to 180 billion dollar market cap uh, because 55 billion is in cash. How do you even value this company? I, I, I honestly don't understand, but um, I'm just saying, I just have to have, have to make a very big disclaimer here. I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that just because it's cheap, means it's a buy. Please do your own due diligence. But I'm just saying, honestly, when I keep looking at many of these um, earnings report quarter after quarter, and they have the ability to spit out this, this sort of free cash flow profile, um, I don't know how the market is trying to value this sort of company. But I think um, the risk is there. I'm not saying that the risk is always there. There is always a huge amount of risk. I'll make it three stars here. There's always a huge amount of risk. If not, it wouldn't be trading at this sort of market cap or market valuation. 
So it's up to you to decide whether you as an investor, are you comfortable with those sort of risks or not? And do you dare to buy when the opportunity is here? Of course, who knows whether what the CCP is going to do to them, but I'm fairly confident on my investment thesis. Now, I think just to focus on the two key areas, I'm just going to look at China Commerce and Cloud itself. So I think before I even focus on the two core business segments, let's look at the other three. Um, generally speaking, I think for the three segments, which is international commerce, um, Cai Niao, and their local consumer services, so they're all experiencing decent amount of growth. And also, um, I think their cost structure is also optimizing. You can see that in terms of growth year on year, it's 26%. And even for their EBITDA margin, um, it's losing money still, but it's losing lesser money. Similarly, for local consumer services, it's growing. And EBITDA margin, um, it's having a smaller and smaller loss. Cai Niao, same note, 27%. Um, I think now it's, it's already break even. So I think just to circle back to China Commerce, because this is the main bulk of Alibaba's business at the end of the day, it's essentially the cash cow that enables um, Alibaba to build other business segments. So if you just look at um, the individual breakdown, direct sales and others and China Commerce wholesale, these are lower margin business. The highest margin business is actually this, the customer management revenue. And for customer management revenue, it's a huge bad picture, it's negative 9% year on year. I mean, yes, it's it's offset by the negative 1% year on year on a China commerce level, but let's not forget this is the high margin business. So if the high margin business continues to collapse down, 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 um, which also explains why on the aggregate, um, Alibaba's margins have been on the downfall. So if you were to look at management's explanation, customer management revenue decreased by 9% year over year, primarily due to the mid single digit decline of online physical goods GMV generated by Taobao and Timor. So excluding unpaid orders year over year, which was mainly due to soft consumption demand on the ongoing competition, as well as the surge in COVID-19 cases in China that resulted in supply chain and logistics disruption. So I did put a note here, um, this is essentially an excuse. They've been using this excuse for uh, many times now for many quarters actually so like i said in the next upcoming three quarters from q1 to q3 um, i think they can no longer blame covid19 and mostly it will be mainly due to the ongoing competition so please um, for many alibaba shareholders out there um, don't need to keep giving me them the benefit of the doubt so let's see how big this threat is from um, fellow competitors um, i think there's no more excuses for alibaba to keep saying or to keep blaming for covid lockdowns and um, supply chain disruptions so on the same note for cloud um, the year-on-year -year growth rate is only three percent um, this this, many people have been saying that, oh, this is the crown jewel of Alibaba. Um, this is the next growth driver of Alibaba. So I'm not too sure. I think we'll leave our comments um, for the subsequent few quarters. I think a large part of it, they have explained that it's due to the very slow macroeconomic environment um, based on management's expectations. You can see that revenue from the non-internet industries grew 9% year over year and contributed 53% of the overall revenue. So the non-internet revenue growth was mainly driven by solid growth of revenue from FS, education, and automobile. On the flip side, revenue from customers in the internet industry declined by 4% year over year. And let's not forget who was cracked down on the on just last two years alone. So many of these internet industries, um, intuitively, you would think that they are the ones that rely on cloud. And because of the entire crackdown episode in many of these internet names, and um, of course, coupled with the bad economy, um, things just don't look right. So I think at least for the entire cloud business itself, um, I would give them a lot more benefit of doubt to be very, very honest. But I think for, for the e-commerce business specifically, which is what many investors are even interested in because it's a huge cash cow, generating huge amount of free cash flow for the business. And even after burning it in all the local consumer services, Cai Niao, and what have you not, um, they're still able to speed out like 10, 11, 12 billion free cash flow in one quarter. So that's still the, that's really still the crown jewel and the, essentially the secret weapon of Alibaba to support many of the other business segments. But that's it, um, competition is coming in, pressure is heating up. And I think even in the transcript, earnings transcript itself, um, Daniel Chang, who's the CEO, actually acknowledged that fact. And he did make a few pointers. So for those of you who are interested um, in the earnings transcript breakdown as well, do remember to subscribe to the channel because I'll be doing a part two where I'll be diving deeper into the transcript itself. So generally, um, this is just my brief summary of how I look at the entire earnings transcript. Firstly, I think weak consumption patterns are still plaguing China as an economy. The focus now is how the government is intending to stimulate the economy. By stimulating, um, it might not necessarily come in terms of uh, monetary terms. We all know based on data, facts and statistics that the Chinese people is as rich as ever. The savings is at all time highs. They just need to make sure that they spend the money and not just keep it in the bank. They have to figure out how to spur spending of the Chinese citizens. Number two, um, there's still very strong cost controls. Um, con cost controls are done extremely well. I think Toby recently just took over as 
um, the CFO. I think I'll give him two thumbs up for that. Um, they, they have been saying it for the last two quarters and they are actually delivering in terms of their cost cutting and their free cash flow generation. I'll give it to him. Number three, in terms of the cash cow of the business, um, of spitting out the free cash flow, I'll give it to them again because many investors on the sidelines have been extremely skeptical of Alibaba losing its magic and not being able to generate or spit out net income and free cash flow. So um, at least in this quarter, they've proved many of those skeptics wrong. Fourthly, I think both the commerce and also the cloud business continue to disappoint. Uh, many investors are, are very sad uh, in terms of the top line growth. I think on top of the top line growth, the product mix where growth is all found in the lower margin business while the higher margin business, which is advertising and CMR has been on a huge and steep decline. Um, at least for me in, in my own thesis, I don't think this is long lasting. I think this should be transitory in nature. Um, I know some of you might be allergic to the word transitory, but um, you need to give them some time to see whether this is a structural problem, um, whether everybody's eating their lunch, or whether is it just a slowdown in advertising and it will be transitory. And I think last but not least, um, if you look at the cash profile, looking at how they have the ability to generate free cash flow, valuations still remain as attractive as ever, if not sometimes even more attractive than before. I mean, for those of you who actually entered a lot later, my average price is around 116 now. So for those of you who have a lower cost than me, you already came in at a much better and more attractive valuation. So these are just my general thoughts on the recent earnings breakdown. For those of you who have different opinions, feel free to leave in the comment section down below. With that, I'll see you in the next video. But more importantly, I will see you on the moon. Goodbye.